light compact helicopters or the LCH indigenous design and developed by the HAL has successfully carried out air to air missile firing on a moving aerial target. During the test conducted in an integrated test range at Chandipur, Odisha, state of India, the test pilots executed a flawless mission and achieved a direct hit on the aerial target, destroying it completely. CMD of HAL R. Madhavan said, This is the first time in the country that a helicopter has carried out air to air missile engagement. None of the helicopters with the military services in the country has demonstrated such a capabilities. With this, LCH has successfully completed all weapon integration tests and is ready for operational induction. On the other hand, on LCH included a 20mm target gun and 70mm rockets, the firing trials of which have already been completed last year. LCH is capable of operating at altitude as high as Sichuan Glacier. It was designed and developed by Rotary Wing Research and Design Center or the RWRDC of HAL in response to the operational needs of Indian Armed Forces. Equipped with a helmet mounted sight and a forward looking infrared sighting system, LCH pilots can now detect and destroy any target on the ground or in the air. Using these sights, pilots can now launch a missile onto any target without having to turn the helicopter. The fire and the forget missile is effective against all types of aerial threat, including UAVs and micro aircrafts. It is also capable of operating from dispersed locations and flying at an ultra low levels. The DAC has accorded approval for the procurement of initial badge of 15 LCH for 10 IAF and for 5 Indian Army. So what do you think of India quitting America's Apache helicopters and India is building and using and integrating its own LCH combat attack helicopters for its needs in coming years. India's ascent on the global stage has climbed another victory after its stock market overtook Germany to become the seventh largest in the world. India edged past the equity market of Europe's largest economy for the first time in seven years, according to a data compiled by the Bloomberg. That means after UK leaves the European Union in the March, the bloc would have only one country, France among the seven biggest markets. The move reflects India's positive return this year as the company's reliance on domestic demand enabled them to avoid the meltdown in other emerging markets spurred by the Federal Reserve tightening and a trade war between the US and China. It also highlights the challenges facing the European Union, including its future relationship with the UK, a standoff with the Italy, or the budget allocations and separatist clashes in the Spain. While the MSCI Emerging Markets Index is heading for a 17% decline this year, India's benchmark SNMP BSE Sensex is up 5% after seesawing throughout the year amid the oil price volatility. In the year dominated by the trade protectionism and punitive tariff by the Donald Trump's President of the United States Administration on China, it's little bit wonder that investors have turned cautious over countries with heavy dependence on the exports. Germany derives more than 38% of its gross domestic product from exports based on 2017 data from the World Bank. The corresponding ratio for India is only 11%, meaning much of the stock market opportunity in the country comes from the domestic consumer stories. Reliance on the local demand and entrepreneurship also puts India ahead in growth sweet stakes. The South Asian nation is projected to grow 7.4% this year and 7.3% in 2019 as a far cry from German growth of 1.6% for each year. While 7.5% and the 7.3% coming in next year is basically less than before and before decades and before 2 to 3 years while Modi became the Prime Minister of India. So what do you think of India's growth? is much higher than other countries but it's basically lower than its India's original GDP when Prime Minister Modi took over 
the government from other Congress party. President Xi Jinping of China warned on Tuesday that no one can dictate China's economic development path as the country's Communist Party marked 40 years of its historic reform and opening up new policies amid a strained challenge from the United States. In a speech at the grandiose Great Hall of People, Xi Jinping owed to the press that the Beijing will not deviate from its own party system or take orders from any other country. The great banner of socialism has always been flying high over the Chinese land, said Xi Jinping. The leaders of the Communist Party of China is the most essential feature of their socialism with Chinese characteristics and the great advantage of the socialist system with Chinese characteristics. Making reforms enacted under her late paramount leader Deng Xiaoping on December 18, 1978, came as the Chinese is locked in a diplomatic spat and a bruising trade war with the United States. The rivals have agreed to 90-day truce as they seek to negotiate a solution, with the United States seeking a reduction in its massive trade deficit as well as a deeper reforms in China to stop the alleged theft of intellectual property. Without directly referring to the United States, Xi Jinping said that China possessed no threat to any country but warned that it would not be pushed around. No one is in a position to dictate to Chinese people what should or should not be done. While Xi Jinping promised more reforms, he did not offer any specifics. The United States and Europe have long complained of lingering obstacles to fully entering into Chinese massive market while the Chinese companies enjoy the benefit of open Western economics abroad. The reform pulled hundreds of millions of people out of poverty and turned China into the world's second biggest economy. But it is currently facing a debt mountain and slowing economy, which grew by 6.9% later this year and is expected by the government to slow to around 6.5% this year. Deng's reform broke with the chaotic policies of his procedures, Chairman Mao Xiedang. Tuesday's ceremony included the awardings of the medals to more than 100 individuals whom the party recognized as a key contributor to the country's development from people involved in the rural reforms and poverty alleviations to China's richest man Alibaba founder Jack Ma and retired NBA legend Yao Ming. China now boasts the most dollar billionaires in the world with 620. I think China now in a state capitalism under one-party dictatorship or party-run capitalism, he said. Beijing-based political analyst Wu Keng told an AFP. Wu said that the trade war could be a chance for China to enact more changes. If the Communist Party is smart enough, it may transform it into a starting point of a second reform and opening up and change the role of a party and the state. When the party enacted the reform under Deng, China was still suffering from famine and was emerging from the cultural revolutions, a period of intense social and political upheaval launched by Mao. This new revolution started in the countryside where the authorities began to de-cultivize land and dismantle communes but it quickly spread to the cities. Very often the opposing power based in economically powerful Shanghai then chose the extreme south of the country as a guinea pig for its reforms. The southern cities including Shenzhen which border Hong Kong and was still a fishing village were designated China's first special economic zone that became the powerhouse and model for the test of the country. Shenzhen has become a global technological hub, with China's internet giant Tencent and telecom titans like Huawei choosing the city for their headquarters. The poverty rate among the rural population dropped to 3.1% last year from 97.5% before 40 years. So what do you think of China's President Xi Jinping himself warning no one can dictate China to say whatever they have to do or not to do, stately or directly saying to the United States. Please give a thumbs up and follow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel. 
and thanks for watching this is wz daily think big think different bye